Hello guys, welcome to Medwitch Made Simple. First of all, hit the subscribe button right now so you won't miss out any of my upcoming videos. Over millions of medical students are learning with Medwitch Made Simple, so do not miss out what everyone is learning and hit the subscribe button right now. Check out our cool unisex t-shirts for men and women on our store S105. The link is in description. You can learn any new skill on Skillshare and make yourself more attractive. Use the link in description to get one month free trial and 30% offer in case you decide to purchase after the free trial ends. If you're looking for investing in crypto, one good app I would recommend is CoinDCX. Use the link in description to get 100 rupees of Bitcoin for free when you make your first investment. You can invest minimum from 100 rupees. Take advantage of the recession going on currently to invest on crypto. In this video, we're going to talk about appendicitis under the following headings. First, surgical anatomy. Appendix is a blind muscular tube which arises from the cecum. It is approximately 7.5 to 10 cm in size. You can identify cecum by the presence of tinea coli. They are three in number. So if you are going to trace to the confluence of these three tinea coli, which is where these three meet, you can identify the base of appendix. Under a microscope, you can see that appendix has four layers, namely mucosa, submucosa, muscularis propria and serosa. It is very important to know about the various positions of appendix, especially for surgical purpose. The most common location is retrocecal position, which is behind the cecum. Then pelvic position is second most common. Other positions, as you can see here, are pre ileal post ileal paracecal and subsecal. These are relatively uncommon. Appendix, appendix is supplied by an end artery called appendicular artery, which traverses through the meso appendix and supplies the appendix. So if this artery gets thrombosed, appendix loses its blood supply and develops gangrene, which is called as gangrenous appendicitis, which is a quite serious condition. Now this is super important. McBurney point is a landmark on the abdomen, which is at the junction of lateral one third and medial two third of a line, which connects anterior superior iliac spine with umbilicus. We'll talk about this McBurney point in detail in the upcoming slides. Just remember where it is as of now. Pathology of appendicitis. The most important culprit is usually obstruction of the lumen of appendix, usually by fecolates, which are nothing but fecal matter, which are dried up and becomes hard. These can obstruct the lumen of appendix. And the other important thing which can trigger appendicitis is hyperplasia of the lymphoid cells present in the lumen of appendix, which can also obstruct the lumen. Because of the obstruction, there will be continuous mucus secretion in the appendix, which cannot go out of appendix which can get infected and exudate production might occur which is pus production inside the appendix and this cannot live out of the appendix because of the obstruction. This leads to increased intraluminal pressure inside the appendix because of which lymphatic drainage and venous drainage will be impeded. So appendix begins to swell and gets edematous and develops secondary infections by bacteria. If not intervened at this stage, appendicular abscess forms and then gangrene can occur and finally appendix might perforate causing severe peritonitis and complications. But if intervened with appropriate medications, resolution can, uh, can occur in some patients without complications occurring. Etiology of appendicitis. Low fiber diet is found to increase the risk and also it is quite common in children and young adults. High fiber diet has been found to be lowering the chances of developing appendicitis. Obstruction of lumen by fecoliths and foreign bodies is an important cause and infection with mixed bacteria which means aerobic and anaerobic bacteria can cause appendicitis. Clinical features of appendicitis. The most classical feature is migratory abdominal pain which starts in periumbilical region and spreads to the right iliac fossa region, then anorexia which means loss of appetite and then fever, nausea and vomiting can occur. About abdominal pain, remember about the migratory pain from the periumbilical region to the right iliac fossa region and the pain is known to increase during coughing and movements because of peritoneal irritation. On examination, you will find that the patient may be pyrexic, means patient is having fever. There will be localized tenderness in McBurney's point. I told you exactly where the McBurney point is at. You can also see it here in this picture. Then patient will be having muscle guarding, which means while palpating the abdomen, you will find that patient is making their abdomen rigid and tight, which you can feel. This is because of the peritoneal irritation and pain. Then you can elicit rebound tenderness by applying pressure over the McBurney point. When the patient feels pain when you're removing your hand from there. This is also known as Bloomberg sign, which is rebound tenderness. Now there are certain named signs with respect to appendicitis. First one is rousing sign. This is elicited by applying pressure in the left iliac fossa region as you see in this picture. And on doing so, the patient will feel pain in the right iliac fossa region. This is rousing sign. Then sova sign, uh, in which you will see that the patient while lying on bed will keep their right thigh flexed. This is because this offers them some pain relief. 
The reason is when the appendix is inflamed, it can irritate the psoas muscle near it. So when it is stretched, there will be pain. So patient flexes their hip to decrease the pain. Obturator sign occurs because of irritation of obturator internus muscle. There will be pain in the hypogastrium, which is the middle lower abdomen area, on flexion and internal rotation of the hip. When you ask the patient to point out where the pain is, they will point out to periumbilical region and they will say that the, they will point out to the right iliac fossa region telling that the pain has migrated from there to here. This pointing out of pain sites with the patients is called as pointing sign. Aaron sign is elicited by applying pressure over the McBurney point which causes pain in the epigastrium region. Now complications of appendicitis. Acute appendicitis can develop into appendiceal abscess, gangrenous appendicitis and perforation can occur if left untreated which can lead to peritonitis, septic shock and severe complications. Investigations Usually, we diagnose appendicitis clinically, but in some cases it has been found that appendix may be normal during surgery and it was a wrong diagnosis. In that case, it, it is called as negative appendicectomy, which is removing a normal appendix. So as to reduce the chances of neg negative appendicectomy, a scoring system has been created called as Alvarado score. The acronym to remember is MANTRELS, which is the first letters of all the components in it. M is for migratory abdominal pain, A is for anorexia, N is for nausea and vomiting, T is for tenderness, R is for rebound tenderness, E is for elevated body temperature, L is for leukocytosis, which means elevated WBC count, S is for shift to left, which means the counts of immature WBCs is increased in the peripheral smear. Note that only two components, tenderness and leukocytosis, has two points, rest all has one point each. The, ten the total score is 10. The first three components are symptoms. The next three components are signs. The last two are lab findings. A score of 7 or more is strongly suggestive of acute appendicitis, so surgery has to be done in such cases. A score of 5 to 6 is equivocal, so further investigations with ultrasound or CECT will help us. It will give us more clues with the diagnosis. Ultrasound is very helpful in children and lean individuals and also in women who are suspected to have other pelvic problems. CECT is also highly sensitive. Other tests are complete blood count, serum electrolytes, Urine, urine analysis and also a pregnancy test because ectopic pregnancy is a very common differential diagnosis mimicking appendicitis. So these are the differential diagnosis for appendicitis. Ectopic pregnancy, diverticulitis, torsion of testis or ovary, mesenteric infarction and acute gastroenteritis which is a very common differential diagnosis in children. Now treatment of appendicitis includes non-operative and operative methods. Non-operative management is done in uncomplicated patients, so it includes keeping the patient nil per oral, which is which is called as bowel rest, then giving IV antibiotics, usually combination of metronidazole and third generation cephalosporin to cover both anaerobic and aerobic uh, bacteria. Then recently a single dose of ertapenem has been found to be very effective. This is called as conservative management. In complicated cases and in those who are progressing towards complications, operative management is required. Before surgery, preparation of the patient is done by giving IV fluids and rehydrating the patient well and appropriate antibiotics are given as well. Appendicectomy means removal of appendix. It can be done as open method or using laparoscopy. The following incisions can be used while performing open appendicectomy. Gridiron incision is a perpendicular incision to the line connecting umbilicus and anterior superior iliac spine at the McBurney point as you can see in this picture. Lance incision is a transverse incision 2 cm below the umbilicus on the mid clavicular line. Then Rutherford incision is kind of like an extension of gridiron incision and it in involves incision of all the muscles in the anterior abdominal wall layer. This is usually in tough situations like fixed appendix and in paracecal and retrocecal positions which are quite difficult to locate with smaller incisions. Let us see the steps of open appendicectomy. First, after incision, identify the cecum using the three tinea coli. Then trace over their confluence, you will get to the base of appendix. If there are additions, break them with your finger and deliver the appendix and bring, bring it outside the incision site. Hold the appendix with Babcock for forceps gently without damaging it. The base of meso appendix is now clamped with an artery forceps and the meso, meso appendix is now divided and then ligated. Now meso appendix is nothing but the mesentery for the appendix which holds the appendix like a sheet around it. Now crush the appendix near its base where it is attached to the cecum. After crushing the base of the appendix, remove the upper artery forceps and apply it little away, little distal uh, from the area where you crush the appendix and now you apply a suture around the crushed portion of the appendix. 
Now amputate and remove the appendix between this suture area and the area where you are holding with the artery forceps. As you can see in this picture here. After that, bury the remaining appendix stump into the cecum using a purse string suture about 1.25 cm away from the base of appendix. This step is called invagination or burying of appendix stump. Laparoscopic appendicectomy has the advantage that it can be first done as a diagnostic procedure and if the appendix is found to be inflamed then we can operate and remove it therefore it is also used as a therapeutic procedure. Three ports are usually used. First one is an infraumbilical port through which you can create pneumoperitoneum and then this port will serve as the camera port to see what you are doing inside. The other two ports are usually made in supra pubic area and left lower quadrant of the abdomen. We operate through these ports. The post-operative complications are surgical site infections, intra-abdominal abscess, paralytic ideas, which can be paralytic ideas can be detected by the absence of bowel movements while auscultating with a stethoscope, then portal pyemia, which is a rare but serious complication, which occurs when the infection spreads from the gangrenous appendix to the liver, causing an hepatic abscess, and the spread occurs via the portal vein. Then adhesive intestinal obstruction can also occur. If you found this video at least somewhat helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe button, which is totally free and gonna help me make more videos. Let us reach 40,000 subscribers soon. Download the lecture slides for reference. The link is in description. Check out our cool unisex t-shirts for men and women on our store at Esther Notify. The link is in description. If you can learn any new skill on Skillshare and make yourself more attractive, use the link in description to get one month free trial and 30% offer in case you decide to purchase after the free trial ends. If you're looking for investing in crypto, one good app I would recommend is CoinDCX. Use the link in description to get 100 rupees of Bitcoin for free when you make your first investment. You can invest minimum for 100 rupees. Take advantage of the recession going on currently to invest on crypto. Make sure to subscribe and join millions of medical students across the world. Follow me on Instagram. Watch more surgery videos here. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.